the Lord our God is the lifter of our head and he is the one who calms and stills every storm, including the storm that invades your mind. I'm Angela Madden. I'm here with Matt Cogley and we pray that today you will be encouraged in a new way to let your light shine. Yes. Speaking of encouragement, Angela, I'm so excited for our guest. He goes by the name of Sean Rodriguez. He's a Christian recording artist. He's going to share a lot of things that he's gone through in his life, how to stay calm through the storm, you know, things and challenges that he's gone through and some changes that are really, you know, going to be interesting and probably inspiring for every single one of us to hear. I love getting to sit down with folks who've had yeah. like this wonderful limelight success and, and kind of hearing more of like who they are yeah. and really how they can endure. Because we just mm -hmm. see the highlight reel. We talk about this all the time. Yeah, Matt, yeah, yeah. You for know, sure. and you're familiar with that. Yeah, I think, well, one thing that's cool is we get to talk about, you know, people see your life in the spotlight. Like even yes. just, just like an episode like this, you yes. know, but uh, they don't know the behind the scenes. Like we are just human beings yes. like everybody else having our different life challenges and struggles and difficulties. But the one thing we all have in common is we got God, yes. you know, and we persevere through Christ. It's the truth. And we know that today, as you're watching today's program, you're going to be inspired and uplifted after hearing Sean's music and message. And you're also going to be encouraged on how you can use your gifts to glorify God. Today, if you stick around, we're going to reveal the winner of yesterday's Stump the Viewer contest. And maybe you are that blessed one who won this amazing prize pack of this t-shirt and this book. Ooh. So stick around. You do not want to miss this interview or winning some gifts. Listen, I'm going to throw this out there. <laughs> on TV, I told the producers behind stage, I said, they need to have a t-shirt yes. with, with my Nanza's face on it. I, yes. I think, you know, a lot of people would, would, would compete for it. A hundred percent. Or maybe they wouldn't. I don't, I don't know if they definitely would or not. But let us know if you like our faces on a t-shirt. But hey, our next guest was catapulted into the spotlight as a featured pre-jam artist on 2023's Nationwide Winter Jam Tour, one of Christian Music's biggest annual outings. Sean Rodriguez, formerly known as Sean B, enters a new season of music and ministry honoring the legacy birthed by his evangelist grandfather more than 40 years ago. How amazing. He joins us now to share more about his music and how God is using him in this current season of his life. Sean, it's great to have you with us back here on Hope for Today. Well, sign me up for the shirt with your guys' faces on it. I'm all about that. Oh, let's, yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Speaking of faces, I know we were laughing about this earlier because a lot of the viewers are going to want to know. Sean, are you and I related by any means? Uh, we, As far as I know, we're not. I do have some questions, though, after yeah. this. <laughs> in Christ, though. In Christ, we, we in definitely Christ, are. That's it. <laughs> Well, hey, so Sean, um, you know, being a musical artist, love to just know what's one of your favorite things that you get to do in the area, you know, of your career. Man, it is by far, it's meeting people. Um, it's hanging out with people, getting to experience like all different cultures and communities. I was just in Joplin, Missouri last weekend, and those people just had the biggest hearts. They were incredible, got to hang out and just kind of learn what their life was about. And the reason that I like to do that is because it reminds me that God is being God everywhere. He's not just being God in my life. He's not just, you know, just helping me through times and, you know, doing what I'm asking for. He's actually doing that for everybody all at the same time. And so it's this cool, like, encouraging and uplifting feeling that you get when you hear other people's stories. Yeah, that's so cool. You know, let's talk about that God helping you. I think a lot of people are going to recognize you from us being on stage or, you know, in the spotlight. And that's how they view your life. But I'm sure there's challenges, you know, off the stage. Would you mind speaking to that? What are some of the challenges maybe that you even face in your career? Man, it's, it's incredible. I think for, for an artist specifically, and I think for anybody, I think that, you know, the enemy will really come and attack your, your confidence and your identity. I think that those are some things that, that can easily get attacked if you're not um, prepared for it. And when I went through, you know, the first few weeks on Winter Jam, that was something that I ran into um, in a big way. You know, Winter Jam was my first tour. It was my first time out. And we're playing, you know, these big arenas and all these people. And I'm seeing, you know, Jeremy Camp up there. I'm seeing Disciple up there. And I'm like, 
this is like my first tour. These guys are crushing it, you know? Wow. And, and so, so the enemy will start to get in your head and say like, hey, you're not, you're not that and you're not this. Mm-hmm. But what God showed me in that time is, well, you need to be, you, your foundation needs to be on me. Because if it's not, then every thought that comes up like that is going to just knock you over. Um, and so that was something that, you know, I, I personally was able to work through and that God showed me, look, you are who I called you to be and you're where you are for a reason. So if I have you there for that reason, then own that and do it a hundred percent. And that was like, that that was honestly the biggest lesson that I learned, um, from my time. That's powerful because I think a lot of people, like you're mentioning, not even just in the music industry or in your type of niche, like everybody faces that to some degree in their life of, comparing, right, or feeling insecure. It. It's just identifying with Christ. And, and a lot of times they, it's, it becomes a setback to them when they fall into that trap. And speaking of setbacks, you have your latest single called Honey. You know, you're hoping it <laughs> encourages people, right, that are yeah. facing setbacks. Maybe speak to that a little bit. What's that song about? Yeah, so that song, man, we all have our goals in life. We have our plans in life. And more often than not, things don't always go exactly how we planned and thought that they would. And when we try and fail so many times, man, life has a tendency to knock us down and keep us there. And if it does, it'll make us bitter towards ourselves. It'll make wow. us bitter towards others. And if the devil does his job right, it will make us bitter towards God. Wow. Um, and that's a dangerous place to be. But the advantage that we have as Christians and as believers is that, you know, the Bible says that the word of God is sweeter than honey to our lips. And so we have this incredible opportunity to turn to the word of God. We have this whole book of promises from him and we can read and say, God, you're with me even now, even in this storm, you are with me, even through this trial, because look, here's the thing. And I, I don't want to get too preachy, but I really want to share Go this because I feel like you, you guys are, you guys are talking about <laughs> storms and somebody's listening. So I, I just wanted, I want to say, look, something that we get from the word of God, we talk about the, the man who built his house on the rock versus the man who built his house on the sand, right? Mm-hmm. A strong foundation versus a weak foundation. But here's the thing that we always forget is that the storms still came for both houses. It didn't say this person built his house on the rock and then the storm didn't come. No, it said this person built his house on the rock and the storm came. So, you know, the Bible even tells us storms are going to come, but it literally is giving us the guideline. This is how you withstand it. You withstand by building on the rock. You withstand by having your foundation on God. And that has been one of my favorite verses lately when it comes to putting some honey on life. It's a reminder, man, we got to stay strong and we got to stay rooted in Christ because if we're not, the storm is going to come anyway. So we'd rather be prepared. That's so good. Man, you're giving me goosebumps here in the studio right now, you know, and it's <laughs> not on, because of the go, AC. Yeah. You know, speaking of infor- or inspiration, and I know this can relate to a lot of people, you know, especially for you as a songwriter, but you go through those, um, like, writing blocks, right? Those still yeah. moments in life where you feel like maybe you're not receiving something. We go through that even with our walk with the Lord. You know, how would you encourage somebody? What is it that you do to kind of break out that mold of going through, like, a stale time? Yeah, I, I always try to step away because I feel like, you know, if it's if it's something that I'm struggling with to find, sometimes I'll get frustrated and I'll start to force it and I'll force a word, I'll force a word. And and it, it just the creativity doesn't flow. So what I what I always try to do, again, going back to your foundation being in Christ, I'll try to step away from that and say, OK, God why am I not able to move forward here? Like, I, I need you to, to change my thinking, change what I'm doing, and, and just give me, you know, in, in the writing sense, give me the words that you're wanting me to say. Yeah. Um, from a live set, give me the things that you're wanting me to do. Put the song here that you want to be in. And so it always starts with stepping back and praying. And then it comes back in. When I step back in, I come back in with an attitude of, like, excitement and fun because the one thing creatives and really just anybody honestly it, it, this can apply to creatives this can apply to you know raising a strong family this can apply to taking care of yourself well mm-hmm. you got to be having fun while you're doing it yeah. because once you start to see God's blessings as a burden or as a task, man, then things start to go downhill. So Mm. if you're suffering from writer's block and you're like, oh, I just got to get this song done, ah, and it's frustrating you, well, then you're losing why you started doing it in the first place because God gave you that passion. You know, if you're with your family and you're frustrated because you have to take them out for a fun day, like, 
that's the blessing that you get to do. Yeah. And I think stepping out and looking at that and remembering this is what God lets you do, this is what God has allowed you to do, those are the biggest ways to come back in with a positive mindset, more energy, and say, okay, let's get past this. Sean, I love that you spoke to that, remembering why you do it. So could you share with us just briefly, what is it that drew you to music and how did this journey begin for you? Man, so I grew up in church. My grandpa, he uh, was and still is a pastor. And uh, my, my first, my most memorable experience in church, I was, I don't know, maybe I was like four or five years old, very young. Um, but we had a worship leader and I, I, to this day, I still, I don't know her, her uh, first name. I, I just always called her Sister Jamal. <laughs> and Sister Jamal was the worship leader and she just led worship with so much passion. And I remember worship was my favorite part of church all the time. And that really just in, like, ingrained like church and worship and rhythm and music into me. And it stayed like, it, it just stayed that way for so long. And so coming up in church, man, I, I got to see some incredible things. I got to see God transform some lives in the biggest ways. And, you know, the church that I came up in, it's the only place in the world where you're going to find, you know, the, the ex gang member and the ex, you know, convict alongside the career businessman and grandma and her grandkids, like everybody's standing together there for one purpose and all in unity and loving each other. Like where else in the world is that going to happen besides church? Like only God can make people from all those different backgrounds come together. And so, you know, you, you take the experience of, of worship and the influence that Sister Jamal had on my life, and then you take the, the influence of seeing just the, the people from the craziest backgrounds come together and be the nicest people that you've ever met. Like, those two things together really fueled this passion for music and ministry, and it truly has become a hybrid of both. It's not one or the other. Um, they've been able to go hand in hand, and so I, I'm super thankful for that. Yeah, you're so right. I love how you mentioned there about the local church. I mean, the local church matters. It's so important, right, to be plugged into That's the local it. body. But you were talking about your grandfather, and I would love to hit on that. You did something that might be scary to most recording artists is making an adjustment to your name, which you may have been known for, right, from uh, what was it, Sean Beats and now Sean Rodriguez. Right. Because your grandfather, maybe you could share a little bit of why you made that change. Yeah, so so when I when I felt it on my heart to make that change, it was like right off the Winter Jam tour, and me and my team were like, "Well, that doesn't make sense because we just did 40 cities as Sean B, and like <laughs> you just, you kind of built up, you kind of established this." Um, but man, it was something that I felt so strongly on my heart because it was for me. There was a couple of things. First of all, it was a way to remind myself of what God confirmed with me that year. He said, "I didn't take you." out of ministry to go and do music. Mm -hmm. I extended your ministry to reach more people through music. Wow. And so for me, using Rodriguez as, you know, using my, using my real name as, as my stage name, it was a reminder to me that this is completely an extension of ministry. And the reason that that is, is because, you know, my grandfather, he taught me so much about what good ministry looks like. It taught me about what good leadership looks like, what sacrifice looks like. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, um, you know, just kind of be upfront about carrying on the, you know, what he had started, what God started in his life. I want to be able to take that, you know, pass the torch, essentially. I want to be able to carry that on in this new generation's way of doing that, you know? So I wanted to be an extension of the ministry that God started in my grandfather. And I want God to bless me with the, the joy for preaching and the energy that he blessed my grandfather with. And so for me, it's just one of these things where I wanna make him proud, I wanna make God proud, and I just wanna be up front and say, hey, this is, this is who I am. I'm a traveling evangelist who uses music as, as the method. You're speaking about reaching people. So since we're a television station, a uh, local television station here in PA, you're going to be, and I believe it's called Shirleysburg, Pennsylvania, right? On That's tour. Right. Tell us a little bit about, put a little shameless plug in there, why people should come Man, out. So, yeah. Okay. So Shirleysburg, Pennsylvania. Um, it, if you don't come out to see me, which I would love you to come out to see me, I'd love to meet you in person, share some new songs with you. But look, if you don't come out to see me, come out to support this festival. Agape Fest, man, 
when I heard the heart behind what they're trying to do, they're trying to kind of rebuild from something that got knocked down and they have just pulled everybody that's coming together is offering their resources in whatever capacity that is, whether it's money, time, um, effort, you know, however, what, what uh, business owners can provide different things. Everybody is pulling their resources to make this event where people can come together and just lift up the name of God. Um, it's, it's truly a story of, of faith that I'm seeing from them. Um, and they, they do, they just believe, they're believing for great things. And when I talked to the, the festival director, I was just like, man, that's exciting. I want to be a part of that. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for that. So again, um, Agape Fest if you don't come to see me, come to support this festival, but hopefully you come to do both. Yes, yes, so good. Well, hey, we've got just about a minute here with you, Sean, and everything you're sharing about is really about putting God center stage, right? We have a music video that we're gonna show viewers, and that's exactly what it's called. Maybe give a little teaser. What's this song about? What inspired you to write it? Matthew 5, 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good work and glorify your Father in heaven. We have an incredible opportunity by the way that we live our lives to represent the God that loves us so much. When people look at us, and this is a prayer that I pray every time before I, before I do interviews, before I go on stage, anything. It's God, let, let people see you when they see me. Speak through me, sing through me, shake hands through me, smile through me. Let your presence be all over that room. I want people to see you when they see me. So the song Center Stage is about saying, God, this is the show, but it's your time to shine. So please do what you do here. So good. Sean, thank you so much for your time. And God is clearly on your life. I believe that people are seeing, you know, the God that's in you, the Jesus, and you're being a great example. Thank you for sharing your music to the world. Thank you all so much for having me. I was super excited to do this today. Absolutely. Well, hey, for our viewers, men, stay tuned here because we're going to go right into his music video, Center Stage. And you might notice some clips from here in the studio. the show so we don't gotta tell them there's a lot they already know it's in the words we say and everything we do the treasure that we chase it's all the living proof yeah it's like the curtain rises every time we walk in the room so let your spotlight show everywhere i go let the way
takes in her stay. When we think of the New Testament disciples, it's easy to idealize their walk with God, but they were just like you and me. They needed a great deal of help to stay on the right path. We're excited to announce that Tom Hollis has a new devotional coming out this June. Spirit Walk follows the apostles as they attempt to follow Christ, as reflected through the book of Acts. Their experiences can be ours as well. All we need to do is follow the Spirit. Enjoy 40 short devotional entries and discover how the journey of the apostles relates to us today. Spirit Walk includes a daily verse, prayer, and space to journal your personal reflections. Be among the first to receive Tom's devotional, which releases June 12th. Ask for your copy of Spirit Walk when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. Welcome back to Hope Today. In case you missed yesterday's program, we had a Stump the Viewer question for you, the audience. Here's what your question was. Which three men in different periods stood almost alone in their godliness among a crooked and perverse generation? And here were your choices. A, Abraham, Daniel, and Job. B, Joseph, Jacob, and Daniel. C, Jacob, Noah, and Joseph or D, Noah, Daniel, and Job? Matt, you wanna take a stab and guess the correct answer? My goodness, I'm bad at remembering names as it is. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's D. You're right. Okay. The answer is D, Noah, Daniel, and Job. So let's take a look and see how many of you got it right. 100%, let's go, that's amazing. Good job, everyone. And now it's time to find out who this week's winner is. Drum roll, please. The winner is Jean Stewart. Congratulations, Jean. You just won yourself a book and a t-shirt. Way to go. Let's go. Congrats to Jean. Well, if you remember a few weeks ago, we had Pastor Glenn Germany join us right here on Hope Today. He's the pastor of Jesus Dwelling Church in North Braddock, PA. And on this week's episode of The Glory Hour, Sydney Goldman had the chance to sit down with Pastor Glenn to hear, about how, or hear how God spiritually prepared him in the scriptures and on the streets for the moment that went down in his church when a man pointed a gun at his face. Take a look. So Pastor Glenn, can you take us back to that moment um, from your vantage point, from your eyes of what transpired, what happened, and even in greater ways that, you know, we a lot of us have just seen that clip, mm -hmm. but there's other things that you have seen the hand and the glorious nature of God. Can you share with us? Yeah, and, and a lot of times, you know, like you say, we just see the clip. That's all we see is the clip, you know, but we don't know the weeks of preparation, years of preparation beforehand. And even us being in the book of Peter, we're studying the book of Peter and Peter teaches about, you know, fiery trials and don't think it's strange when you go through them, understanding this is how your faith get purified. And so we were already studying the book of Peter and learn about going through trials, you know? And so for this incident to happen, when it happened, how it happened, you know, I, I was really caught off guard by it, to be honest with you. I never expected to see a gun, you know, me preaching and seeing a gun. Maybe in my past, I expected to see guns, but not while I was preaching, you know? And all of a sudden, just someone who you don't know from just nowhere, just you're looking down the barrel of a gun and, you know, just natural reaction. People's like, what were you thinking at the time? I'm like, what would you be thinking at the time? You know, I'm like, I'm from the street, so I understand. You see gun, you run, you know, yeah. get out of the way. And that's the only thing that went through my mind is just get out the way, you know. And I didn't hear no shots at the time. So when I didn't hear no shots, I looked back to see where he was. He was still coming after me, even though he had already pulled the tr trigger twice. And then the deacon grabbed them, and once the deacon grabbed them, it's like, okay, help him, you know. But to be honest with you, what was running through my mind, I didn't have time for nothing to run through my mind. It was just react, react, react. Yeah. 
That was like instinct. It's like flight or fight. Like you see that you don't, it just like what you're saying, I'm reacting to what's happening in front of me. And that split moment, that split second, because I was reading, I mean, you thought it was just a friend of someone from the church, like coming in, coming up the pole, like that, that you, you weren't expecting that to happen. Like I know, I know like in different churches and expressions, like people come up to the, might come up to Paul's like, yes, pastor, you know, you might say, <laughs> right. amen, hallelujah, right. talking about trials and all right. these things, right. but not expecting that to like to happen um, and to play out the way that it did. Be sure to join Sydney for more of her conversation with Pastor Glenn Germany of Jesus Dwelling Place Church for the Glory Hour by going on to Cornerstone Television Network's YouTube channel. New episodes drop on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Angela, I love just re refreshing myself of that testimony from Pastor Glenn and hearing the testimony even with Sean today, Rodriguez. Yes. And, you know, we overcome by the blood lamp and the word of our testimony. Yes. The enemy wants to shut our mouths, shut our yes. words. We can share that, wrap it up real quick. I know I was at the dentist and I was, I was having just pain with my mouth and I could barely open it, causing me to freak out about today, wondering if I'm going to be able to speak. And you even had a situation come up today, the same uh, thing, right? Yeah, I had an egg explode on my lips. And so <laughs> my lips are all burned. But yeah, you know, I love that story with Pastor Glenn and mm. I love Sean Rodriguez's story because I yeah. think all of them point us to this fact center stage, yes. okay? God must take center stage. Whether you yourself are in front of crowds of thousands of people or you are preaching on a Sunday service or you are in a hospital bed and you have nurses around you serving you, you are called to shine a light and bring Jesus to the center stage of every moment. Yeah, I mean, it's like the Bible says, be ready in season, yes. out of season, season, greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. Listen. Yes. God brought you on the earth for this moment, for this time. Let your light shine. Let him take center stage because what good is it for just your life to be transformed? You want to be transformed so your testimony, you can be a living example of the goodness of God to the people around you, Angela. Yeah, you know, Sean mentioned in his testimony that whether it was sand or rock, the storms came for both men. And so our hope is here and Christ's hope for you is that you would find your rooting in the rock that doesn't change in him, who is steady, who is a force to be reckoned with, who loves you more than you could ever fathom. And today we encourage you take one more step towards settling your life on a rock that when the storms come, you'll be unmoved because he's in the boat with you, steadying the storm around you and speaking peace to your own heart. There is hope today.